Hey guys, Erin here at Eat Move Rest and welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna dive right into what a plant-powered pyramid looks like as well as how to place everything on a plant-based plate. For starters, there are a thousand different ways within the world of veganism to eat your food. Everything from high carb to high raw, keto, you name it. There's a thousand different modalities. We've been doing this for over six years now, so it's our duty to share our real life experience with you guys. So we're gonna share with you guys what our plant-based food pyramid looks like and make a plate for you guys. So if you can visualize a food pyramid, insert image right here, <laughs> then you'll notice that most of them do not incorporate a few essential components to overall health, happiness, and well-being and those are elements in nature. So breathing in fresh air. We can go a lot longer without food than we can without air. So oxygen is of utmost importance. What is the air quality like where you live? Are you getting outdoors in nature? And on that note, going barefoot, grounding, connecting with the earth. Drinking clean drinking water that's pure from a clean source. And last but not least, sunlight. So sun is so energizing and some even say you can actually receive food, food from the sun. So pay attention to those four essential elements before you even think about what you're putting on your plate. Okay guys, so starting off at the base of the pyramid, we have fruits and vegetables in abundance. So it's no secret that Aaron and I eat a very high carb diet. Between 60 and 80% of our calories come from carbohydrates and this is in the form of starchy vegetables like potatoes and high carb fruits like bananas, watermelons, berries. These are the things that we live on, thrive on, and our bellies crave. This is such a wide and vast category. Everything's right here in the base and it's so important. You can kind of look at it two different ways though. You can look at getting your vitamins and minerals from things like berries and greens, but you're actually also gonna be getting on the other side of the token most of your calories from things like bananas and the starchy carbs like potatoes. Stepping up to the next level on our plant-based pyramid are healthy whole grains. So this includes anything and everything from wheat products to brown rice to quinoa, even though technically it's a seed, we are including it in the grain category. Oats, oatmeal is a fantastic nutritious way to start your morning. And also in this category would be pastas, cereals, and breads. So while we typically opt for the whole grain option, you can incorporate some breads, pastas, and cereals if they are minimally processed and are made from whole grains. So even if you are trying to be gluten-free, whether it's due to sensitivities or celiac, or you just prefer not to include too much gluten in your diet, there are plenty of other whole grain options. In fact, you can find chickpea pasta, brown rice pasta. Those would be our top two picks. The bread that we really enjoy is actually Ezekiel bread. So while it does contain gluten, there are tons of healthy sprouted grains in it. So we really love that option. And Max likes to snack on gluten-free cereal. There are tons of options in the stores, even some that don't contain any added refined sugar. Moving up the pyramid to probably my favorite category, beans and legumes. These are things like black beans, cannellini beans, green and red lentils, even soybeans and tofu. So again, this is where you're gonna get your protein and people say, beans, beans, the magical fruit, the more you eat, the more you toot. I get so many messages from people on Instagram, especially that are like, hey, I just went vegan and I'm so gassy. I'm feeling so bloated. So if gas and bloating is keeping you away from things like lentils and beans, I would say buy them dried and soak them. The soaking process is actually a step in the sprouting process and it removes the protective anti-nutrients that can cause gas and bloating. So if this is something that sounds like it's way too much work, you can always just buy canned. I'd be lying if I didn't eat more canned beans than dried, it's just easier. And eating beans versus not eating beans is a serious misstep. One of the longest lived communities and cultures in this world are thriving on beans. These beans are amazing for you and a great source of protein and fiber. Stepping up again, we are moving on to nuts and seeds and avocados. So you can think of these as your healthy fats. So I know a lot of people have concerns with nut allergies or sensitivities, so I would always opt for seeds before nuts. Some of our favorites include the highest amount of omega-3 fatty acids would be flax seeds and chia seeds. 
As far as nuts go, we really, really love walnuts as well as almonds, but let's be honest, we love them all. Nut butters also fall into this category. Max's personal favorite is cashew butter, which happens to be super high in iron. It's the highest that we've found. And avocados, who doesn't love avocado? Dusty and I tend to split an avocado at dinner almost every single night, and it just makes our salads seriously next level. Working all of those healthy fats, it's gonna be great for hair, skin, and nails, heart health if you're using a lot of omega-3 fatty acids, as well as brain function. Especially when you have kiddos, babies and toddlers are really gonna thrive on a lot more fat than we are as adults. So we typically strive for a high carb diet and we move nuts and seeds and our fats up higher on the pyramid because typically you don't want to overconsume. Not only are they higher in calories, they can also begin to clog your arteries with cholesterol if you're getting too much saturated fat in your diet. So we tend to move those towards the top for that reason. Moving on to one of my favorite and one of the most exciting categories in the plant world are herbs, spices, and superfoods. So when we were in Costa Rica on our retreat, we always do a farm tour with Brian who knows basically everything about every plant that was ever planted. And one of the questions we had was, what's the difference between, you know, herbs, spices, and leafy things like a salad green that you would eat? Basically, it comes down to potency. And things like cilantro and parsley and some of these superfoods and spices are so potent, we just need a little tiny, tiny bit to get a massive benefit. So this is why this category is so much smaller. Some of our favorite herbs are parsley and cilantro. They actually keep really well in a jar like this in the fridge. You just clip them, put them in a little bit of water, and put them in the fridge. These are actually also super easy to grow. We grow ours every spring and summer in our little planter bed over here, along with things like basil. Again, they add that extra oomph to your nutrition, and they also add that flavor to your meals. So, so, so important. A few of my favorite superfoods are number one, maca powder. This is something that can be added to your smoothie. For hormone health, I take it to bump up testosterone. I hear women take it when they're trying to get pregnant. And other things like acai powder. This is a super high concentrated antioxidant. And again, we all want antioxidants in our diets to be fighting those free radicals that we're exposed to every day. So, so yeah. <laughs> so at the very tip top of our food pyramid would be processed and or refined foods. So these are foods that we very rarely have to purchase. We do have them on hand, but we very rarely use them. <laughs> so it's gonna be things like refined fats, which would be oils. So olive oil, even flax oil, even though flax is healthy, we prefer to use flax seeds instead of flax oil. That being said, oils can be very important and nutritious, again, for infants and toddler health, just simply because they require a lot more calories and a lot more fats for eye development, brain development, and so on. So if you choose to incorporate oils, keep them at a minimum. But again, say we're going out to a restaurant, a nice Italian restaurant, and there's olive oil on the bread and the pasta, we're not necessarily going to turn it down, but we are going to be cognizant of the fact that yes, we're eating a richer meal, but that's not how we're eating 99% of the time when we're at home preparing our own meals. Again, in this category, it also includes processed foods. So that would be if you were eating a plant-based burger, of course, it's gonna have a lot of added ingredients that may not be the best for you. So we always say make your own, but every once in a while, it's okay to indulge. And also things like refined carbohydrates, AKA white table sugar, you can always upgrade a little bit to something like coconut sugar. So this is somewhat unrefined, even though it's still a sugar granule. This would be a great option for baked goods if it's a special occasion like a birthday party. I also really, really love my go-to pick, which would be dates. So this category, again, has all kinds of options, even plant-based butters. Almost anything that you can find an animal derivative for, you can also find a plant derivative for these days. So we've even got plant-based ice cream in this category, and we do not shy away from this and a little bit of dark chocolate from time to time after our meals. So don't be afraid of these categories. Don't be so rigid. Do allow yourself to enjoy a treat from time to time. Just know that they're at the very top. And finally, 
on that note, if you are A, transitioning, or you're just vegetarian and that's where you want to draw the line, this is where we would also add animal products into our pyramid. So not to make the animal products a focal point of your plate, but instead to be crowding out more of the bad with more of the good. So when you're thinking about making your plate, we're gonna show you that next, but just be cognizant of how you're arranging your plate, how much of what categories you're putting on there. If you're thinking you really want a big juicy steak on there, instead maybe opt for a very small portion and crowd it out with lots of those fruits and vegetables, whole grains, legumes, nuts and seeds from the other categories so that you can start to transition away from that and reap the benefits. Now let's actually build that plate. We've got our green leafies, which are in fact a vegetable, <laughs> and we've got a fresh peach. And if you are familiar with Dusty and I's What I Eat in a Day videos, you'll notice that not every plate, in fact, most plates we make do not look like this, but this is just the ideal example to show you just how easy, just how beautiful and abundant it can really be to add all of these beautiful, colorful whole foods onto your plate and how filling it can be too. Next up, we're heading into our legumes. So we've got some cooked chickpeas here. Again, legumes are going to be probably your greatest source of plant protein, along with whole grains, but more so legumes. If you wanted to bump up that protein content even more, this is where you could add in the tofu, tempeh, or seitan. For our healthy whole grain, we've got quinoa, and we actually incorporated some more veggies. So we've got peas and corn in it. This was actually part of our meal prep. Yesterday was Sunday, so we prepped a huge batch of veggie lentil stew and quinoa with veggies. Moving on, we're going to add on some of our lentil veggie stew. So this goes in the legume and vegetable category. We've got carrots, beets, potatoes, and sweet potatoes. Dusty's a potato lover, I'm a sweet lover. And last but not least, Avocado. So avocados are going to incorporate that fat source for you, which also helps to make a lot of the vitamins and minerals and the other plant foods more bioavailable in your body. So if you guys are interested in seeing what a day of vegan meal prep looks like for us, let me know in the comments below. We would be happy to put something together for you guys. So the next step in the process would be to top this with like salt, pepper, some parsley, some maybe some oregano, and or some turmeric even on these chickpeas just to add in those herbs and spices that we talked about earlier. So additionally, we get like 99.9% .9 of our nutrition from the whole foods that we eat. But in the case that we for some reason aren't, for instance, B12 is a bacteria found in the soil and with our sterile foods these days, we actually should be supplementing. So for any vegetarians or vegans especially, we recommend vitamin D and vitamin B12. Even those that are eating meat, both of those have been shown to be low in pretty much everyone. So we highly recommend vitamin B12, vitamin D, and if you guys would like to know more about the supplements that we take, comment below and maybe we can do a whole dedicated video. All right, you guys, so there it is. Now we get to fight for who gets to enjoy this <laughs> plate full of deliciousness. Marriage, we share <laughs> everything. Be sure to follow us daily on Instagram at Aaron Stanzik, at DB Stanzik. Give us a like if you liked this video. Be sure to subscribe. Join us here at the Eat, Move, Rest headquarters. Yes. As always, leave us some love in the comments below. And eat, move, rest your best <laughs> and forget the rest. See you guys. We're Dusty, Aaron, Max, and Bo, and we're the Stanzix. We aspire to live a plant-centric, faith-forward, healthy lifestyle and welcome all of the adventures that accompany it. Join us every week as we blend, chop, juice, run, lift, ride, and master our minds in between on the ultimate quest to find better balance, deeper connection, and true happiness within.